Hello, I'm David Roach, and in this video I'm hoping to give you all an insight into the organs kept and preserved by Francis Stapleton. This should give you an idea of the types of sounds you will be able to use in your pieces, the nature of the organ we're working with, and how it all actually works as an instrument. We are going to be writing for Astrid, but she's in repair until mid-November, so please bear in mind that the sounds that you're going to hear are just similar to Astrid, they're not actually Astrid. The organ we've recorded to give an example of similar sounds is called Harley Crossley, love the names, and I will be making a film of Astrid as well as some recordings in November, but as stated, we have to wait for it to come back. I've also created a specific audio file that outlines the character of each of the ranges on Harley Crossley, so that should give you a good impression of the ranges on Astrid because they're so similar. Um, that'll probably be more useful for the actual process of composing, so please make sure you listen to that file too. Yeah. Right, okay, so Francis Stapleton runs what is essentially a private organ museum near Bala in North Wales. The instruments that he keeps are sent all over the world for performances, exhibiting and general use. Near his home were two large industrial crates full of these things. It's unbelievable to see. I mean, these organs are considered small, but they're still, to me, really huge things. They're industrial, loud, mechanical, incredible machines. Francis keeps street organs, fairground organs, dance organs, organs of different national origin and anything in between. One of the most important things to take from this video is that all of these organs are unbelievably different and as customizable as the owner wants them to be. There is not a cut and dried organ that we can talk about. Part of Francis's interest in these organs relates to this customization. Astrid, who again we don't have any footage of at the minute, started life as a very small organ and ranks and stops were added to her over time. That's how she got built into this huge instrument. There doesn't have to be a justification for this customization. Although Francis states that some purists are not a fan of really heavy alterations, the additions to organs are made and informed by the taste of the owner. It's really a labor of love. But these organs, like any other, make their sounds by having a system that admits air into different parts of the instrument. Although Francis's organs are electrically powered now, they still have huge industrial components. The electricity often powers the cogs, that pumps the bellows, that feeds the pipes with air. They are really industrial machines. The noise and the mechanical nature gives them a, a proper steampunk feel. As for feeding music to these organs, that can be done in different ways. We will be using a MIDI system fitted onto Astrid, but it's definitely worthwhile chatting about some of the different mechanisms that are used instead. The majority of the organs that are not fitted with MIDI readers require music rolls or cardboard books. If you've ever seen any of the videos of Conlon Nankaro's player piano studies, or if you have a music box, then you'll already have an idea of what this looks like. Many of these organs, including Astrid, are similar. The little holes on the cardboard that allow the air to pass through, this activates a corresponding component of the organ, you know, like a pitch, a drum, whatever, and that's what produces the sound. Francis has these books all over the shelves in these industrial containers and in his house, and some of them are absolutely gigantic. The size of the piece of cardboard corresponds to the scale of the organ. An organ's scale is a description of every sound it is able to produce. Every sound on an organ requires a space on the scale, so organs with a big scale have a really wide piece of card or need a really wide piece of card on their books in order to be performed. It's kind of like regular sheet music except the axes are flipped. It's also worth noting that some organs have large rolls built in, which is also pretty wild. Um, there are obvious problems that come along with something being so industrial, but it gives the instruments an unbelievable sense of character. They're a huge amount of fun, and you really get the sense that it's a live performance, not a computer. Some of the organs, including Astrid, have MIDI readers attached. There's a website that provides organ enthusiasts with everything they're after. It's called rollcutter.com. So like many things since the internet came along, we get to see an online culture develop. These MIDI readers require small magnetic components to be attached to every note on the scale. These are then connected to an SD card reader uh, via a connect connecting cables. But even with these electronic components, we are still dealing with industrial sounding instruments. These magnets just control the collapsing of the valves and 
they replace the cardboard box so it's more practical for people to store the music that they want to play on their organs. Okay, so I hope that gives you a little introduction to what we're all composing for here. I have a little bit of footage dealing with Harley Crossley, the organ that resembles Astrid a little, so I'll be sure to pop that on at the end. It's also worth noting that Astrid's bass range is a little softer and the organ itself is a little smaller than Harley Crossley. A final note is that it was hammering down with rain during the recording. Uh, I drove to North Wales during Storm Callum. It wasn't that bad, other than Snowdonia, but it did create a lot of residual noise when we were recording. So I've done my best. Uh, we were huddled, huddled under a cover for most of the recording, and I don't think my mic picked up too much noise. So I think we were lucky. And also I've got a cold. <laughs> but... um. Get in touch if you have any questions about the organs or how they work or how to make sure everything's working on Sibelius and I'll do my best to help you. I'll have some more information about Astrid as soon as I can, be taking another trip up to North Wales to do some films and recordings and hopefully then we'll have everything clarified.